I sewed a coat by hand and I'm gonna show you step by step. So I've wanted to do this for a very long time. I'm working with double-faced wool, meaning there's two layers of wool sewn together. So it's a very, very strategic way of sewing. And I'm going to show you step by step how I worked this entire coat out with three main stitches. Not a lot out there, guys, and I was searching and searching, and I found an article, which I will link in the bio, which was fantastic, by this girl, Kendra McCullough, and she shows the three different stitches to sew this, and I used that to making this entire coat. I have already a few videos out, one on how to put the patch pocket on. Don't miss that. It'll be linked below, and let me get you started making a coat mostly by hand. Now that I have it separated at the three quarter of an inch stitching on both the back center back pieces, you can take out all the excess if you want, or threads. Um, I also put a one quarter of an inch line stitching in the self color all the way on both sides of each one of the back pieces putting right sides together with the two pieces that are in the inside you can pin it baste it and i will be stitching that at a half of an inch seam allowance all the way down the center back seam Now you can see that this is the half of an inch seam that I put in, that it was important to take out all the way to three quarters of an inch because now I'm gonna to have to press this open like this with my hands or with the iron to turn this back to clean it inside. I'm going to trim a little bit of it off. I think it might be helpful, just a tiny bit. Now with all that separated, I'm going to turn this side to the center and pin it, and this side, turning all that excess to the center. And sewing it shut inside. Put a damp cloth and steam it down. And we just finished this back seam. This is the inside, this is the outside. I think uh, because everything is going to have to be done the same way, I'm going to go ahead on all the pieces and sew with my basting stitch three quarters of an inch with the contrasting thread and so that every seam will be prepared to start putting the pieces together. That includes the belt, that includes the collar and the sleeves. And now I think the next step would be doing the shoulder seam. I'm going to put a stitch a quarter of an inch on both of the separating layers. Press it down. Now I'm doing a different seam for the shoulder than I did for the back seam and that is I'm going to do the one that has all three layers and then one lapped over. So wrong sides together on the shoulder I'm putting three layers together like this and I'm going to pin it and stitch it leaving this one back piece free and stitch it a half of an inch. 
And then keeping the one layer free, I'm going to do the three layers, pushing that back and stitching it about a half of an inch seam line. Now those three seams that are sewn together, I have to trim that down just a little bit. And I'm going to press the stitched pieces towards the free area. And then I'm going to fold the free piece that quarter of an inch under on top of the folded piece like that. and pin it down. Now with those three layers trimmed and pressed in and the free layer turned under at a quarter of an inch, I'm going to close it on the right side of the garment on that seam line and the fold by hand. All the way down after you have that all sewn down then you take your basting threads in the contrasting threads out you remove those on that side as well as this side and then on the right side of the ironing board I'm getting a damp handkerchief and I'm going to try to get rid of those markings from the basting by steaming and pressing it And that's the beauty of wool. It has the ability to do that. And there you go with the really cool seamless seam. Now that the shoulder is done, we're going to go ahead and set in the sleeves. I've already prepped it by separating the layers on both the armhole. I'm prepping it by putting that quarter of an inch stitching for my guide. I also have a thread marking for the center of the sleeve. So this is where the debate comes in, whether to have the predominant seam on the outside or on the inside. I chose to have it on the outside, so if you like that, put wrong sides together and then do the stitching on the outside. Otherwise, put right sides together, three layers, and then do the hand stitching on the inside. I'm pinning that all along. And I will be stitching this at 3 eighths of an inch and then encase all the layers. So the application for the belt itself, I'm not going to go into huge detail because I used the same process in the last video on the pocket application. So since it has two layers already sewn to itself, on the belt you just cut the piece at the width you want then I put the three quarter of an inch uh, basting stitch in contrasting thread then the quarter of an inch of uh, stitching in the self thread turn it back within itself like this and then hand sew the actual closing by hand like that all the way along all edges and the entire belt.
Now the same process I used on the belt itself, I also did that same technique on the top of the collar, the sides of the collar, the top of the lapel, and all the way along the front of this coat. So now we have to do this one large seam that goes all the way down the coat itself and casing the sleeve all the way down to the side seam of the coat. This is where it gets a little tricky guys. Um, remember I made the belt and remember the design here. So the design basically makes it free in the back for the belt is inside. So, I'm going to have to do the same application or seam application as I did in the back where the seams are opened and separated because on this coat, I'm going to have to make an opening here for the belt to pass through. And I already have that marked off. Now the task of separating the layers. Now press the seams so that they lay flat again. Then I'm going to put that quarter of an inch self-thread stitching to hold the layers nice and straight on every one of the pieces before I proceed. Now again, pushing back the other layer that is not to be sewn down, just the two layers you're going to sew at about half an inch seam allowance. It could be a little less, more like 3 8 but that's okay. It's just depending upon what your pattern um, needs. Watch till the end for the big reveal. Now I'm at the opening. The reason why I did this type of seam in the first place was that I, was, I wanted an opening for the belt to pass through. And so now to clean that, it's really cool because I'm going to be, I'm still turning the outside layer into the inside layer like this and pressing it down. And then of course later stitching it down. And what's going to happen at the opening is that I'm just going to be stitching it to itself, just like the hem stitch, and we're all good. So, very, very cool. And I'm going to pin that down to itself there, and pin this down to the coat itself. And I'm going to do that to both sides. We're getting there. So I spent the evening sewing down the sides of the coat all the way from the sleeve down to the side of the coat, leaving that opening for the belt, which is really, really cool. And then I took out all of the basting threads and the pins. And you can see there's a lot of markings. So then that has to be steam pressed with a damp cloth to get rid of all of those markings. Now that all the hem is pinned and pressed, you just have to do the hand sewing, and that is to close the two layers at the edge very carefully. After you sew that, don't forget to take out the basting threads. 
before you steam press it. Okay. Oof.